Uh, if you want to know uh, what the genesis of this uh, great new song featuring Carrie Lake came from, uh, take a look at this quick clip. I always say, you know, can't afford groceries, can't afford gas, 81 million votes, my ass. For real, for real. <laughs> and there she is. That was an interview she did. I heard her say it at CPAC and said, you know what, this is going to be a song, our latest song at MailmanMediaMusic.com. You can download it. It's live right now. Carrie is kind enough to join us very early this morning. Terrence is going to join as well. Carrie, I know you were in the TV business like us for a long time, but uh, we appreciate you getting up early. I don't know if you did mornings or what, but uh, you were a great anchor, and now you're a great politician. Good morning. Absolutely. Oh, well, it's a little early over here on on the West Coast. I got up at 5.30, but you know how much I love Real America's Voice. And, um, Ed, it's been so much fun working with you. And Terrence, I've, I've uh, had a great chance to interview with you. So I'm happy to be here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And one good thing morning. I do know I about Arizona is that yeah, everyone gets up this time of the morning to go walk to try to beat the heat. So I'm sure you're up fairly <laughs> often this early to try to beat the heat out there in Arizona. <laughs> That's right. We have you have to get up very early this time of year because typically it's you know in in the one hundreds, uh, with by ten a.m. Or, or or noon. Absolutely. Go ahead, Ed. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's get serious about the issues uh, beyond the song, you know, sort of behind the song. I should say, you know, that that VH1 behind the music. The reason I approached you. Uh, is because I heard you at CPAC behind closed doors talking about the 81 million votes that, let's face it, uh, very few people believe Joe Biden really got 81 million votes. And there's kind of a cutesy way to say it uh, uh, there. And some people might love the way it's said and other people might not. But you're making a, an important policy point, yeah. which is that this is what you get when there's election fraud. We'll talk about Arizona in a minute. But on the national level, you have a stolen election in 2020 and now you don't have border. You've got this fentanyl crisis. Uh, and this is what the country gets when we, we can't have this free speech conversation about what really happened. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, isn't it interesting that you can't mention elections or, or question the corruption in elections? It's like the taboo topic. I mean, you can go into kindergarten class and talk about sex, but you can't talk about elections and corruption, especially when it's right out there in the open and in our face. And we know what happened in 2020 happened again in 2022. I mean, how on earth could Joe Biden have had 81 million votes it defies logic. And then you see the evidence behind it. It defies logic. He only got 16 percent of the counties. He only won 16 percent of the counties, allegedly. And Trump had a record winning 83 percent of the counties across this country. But the critical point was that he won those massive mega counties like Maricopa, where they run third world country style elections like they did in 2022. So I always say, you know, 81 million votes, my bleep. <laughs> I said that at night, by the way. And, and you know, honestly, it's an insult to our intelligence that they're trying to gaslight us into believing that. We saw what happened in 2020 when they stopped counting. And all of a sudden, we woke up the next morning and Joe Biden had surged ahead. None of it makes sense. We saw how they pulled out all the ballots from underneath the table in Georgia when everybody left and started counting. There is a mountain of evidence. And I'm tired of acting like that didn't happen. That's the reason we have a war pending right now in Ukraine, possibly world war. That is the reason we have a wide open border. That's the reason our inflation is nearing 10%. We can't afford groceries. Mm. We can't afford the basics right now. Carrie, you mentioned this mountain of evidence. We'll get to that momentarily because I know you're introducing new evidence in your appeal. But I am curious, as you continue to drill down on these election integrity issues there in Arizona specifically, you're fighting it in the courts. But on a more grassroots level, what needs to happen in order to fight this systemically? Well, I, I will tell you, I think the way we solve our election problems and we bring back and restore honest elections that all voters, Democrats, independents and Republicans alike have faith in is we go back to election day. I mean, just think about most of our state constitutions and our constitution talks about election day, not election month. We go back to paper ballots, not uh, ballots where they're being entered into machines and tabulators that we don't even know how they're how these machines work. And uh, the components are made by our adversaries. And we count the votes on election night. We don't count for two weeks like they do in Maricopa County. So we, we shorten the election window from a month 
plus, which is what it is now, back to election day. We get people to vote in small precincts like we used to do before COVID struck and they moved us into these massive vote centers, which I call fraud centers. And we count the votes right there after the polls close and we have the results that night. It's real simple. And by the way, we also show photo ID. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to play the song in a minute uh, on the way to break. Uh, I know you got a book coming out. I want to mention at the end of June from Winning Team Publishing, which has published President Trump's books uh, as well. Everyone is, is craving to hear more about the Carrie Lake story. So what does the future hold? Because we sat here and watched. Terrence was talking about some of the evidence you're going to put in the appeal, and you're taking it now to the U.S. Supreme Court. I, I am absolutely stunned because I continue to hear the mainstream media. Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? We watched three days of testimony in Maricopa County where basically uh, you showed and your great legal team that it's about two and a half seconds that it took them to approve these signatures from mail-in ballots and others that were disputed. No one believes that can really happen, and yet they dismissed it. So where do you go from here with the U.S. Supreme Court? And is the Senate, uh, are you looking at the Senate as well? Well, we filed a notice to appeal um, yesterday, last uh, actually the night before last, and um, we're, we're looking at some of the new evidence that came in. We had to claw to get the evidence from Maricopa County. This is public information. We had to work so hard to get it. And once we got it, there was the mother load of information. We found out that they secretly tested the equipment after their official test. They broke open the seals. They entered new uh, memory cards. And they knew that these machines were going to fail on Election Day, which is what they did. When they did that secret testing, 58% of the machines failed. And guess what? They used those failing machines on Election Day when 75% of the people showing up were voting for us. And so they sabotaged Election Day. That's why we had four and five and six hour lines. They used that faulty equipment in the Republican areas so that when the Republicans showed up, it took them forever to vote. And, and many people just walked away. They didn't have all day to vote. So we're going to file an appeal on that. And we are going to continue pushing through the Arizona courts and into the United States Supreme Court. And we're not going to stop until we have honest elections. Carrie, just really quickly, I'm going to restate uh, Ed's question because the, the second part of the question is, is the Senate next for you? You're headed to Georgia to speak at the GOP convention there. Is this an entree for a potential run for Senate? You know what? I have I have considered it. I won't lie. I've considered it and I've talked about it, but I'm so focused on our case right now. And as Ed said, I have a book yeah. coming out called Unafraid. And so I'm, I'm really focusing on that. And while we wait for our case to work through, we'll see what happens. I do know, looking at a lot of polling, that uh, nobody can beat me in the Republican primary and that I would go on to win the uh, the run for Senate. But I, I want to make sure that our elections are fair and square. I want to make sure that when it comes to the presidential election, they're fair and square. And so this is my priority. Okay, fair enough. Absolutely. Uh, you're a tough fighter. You're a great patriot. Carrie Lake, <laughs> it's been great working with you on the song. Everyone could go to Apple, Amazon, or wherever you stream music on Spotify uh, and get the song and check it out. Carrie Lake, you're a great patriot. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. We'll play it. Thanks, guys. Search 81 million votes online. Uh, Apple, Amazon. Here it is on the way to the break. Have Thanks, a good Carrie. weekend. Call to China, hookers and blows and crack, and the diary's got creepy Joe in the shower. 81 million votes my ass.